Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 29 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to talk about the grid bag layout as well as the grid layout. I need to get myself some libraries, of course, and everything that's on here you've already seen a million times. So I'm just going to skip over parts of it. Well, the first thing we're going to need is the grid bag constraints library. And what you do with this is you're going to define rules for how your components are displayed whenever you're using the grid bag layout. And then, of course, I need to go and get the grid bag layout library and there that is and then I also need to get the grid layout library because we're also going to review that and a grid layout is similar to a grid bag layout the only thing is it's a lot more constrained it's just going to lay everything out in a grid hence the name you're going to see what's going on and then I also need to bring in Java insets, and this is going to allow me to define padding in regards to my components. All right, so got all that. Here I create a whole bunch of different buttons. Here I create a text field. Here we're calling all this. Here we're displaying the frame and all the other things you've seen a million times before. So let's just jump right in here and create our grid layout. And we're just gonna go the panel, and we're gonna go set layout. And then we're inside of here, we're gonna go new grid layout and then what you need to define is the number of rows now if you leave this as zero that's just telling the layout tool to use as many rows as needed then we're going to say we want to have three columns that's going to help it be able to figure out how many rows to put in there and then we're going to define we want a two pixel horizontal gap and a two pixel vertical gap between all of the different components so pretty simple and then we have to create all of our different buttons inside of here so i'm going to go but one is equal to new J button and then give it some default text. Of course put a space inside of there. Then we're going to create one of these for all the different buttons that we're going to need. And there we go and then I just have to correct all the different text inside of these and I'm putting together a layout that is going to be very similar to what you would do if you're trying to create a calculator. And there you go. So we got all of our different buttons defined inside of this guy. So now what I need to do is add all these different buttons to my grid layout. My grid layout is very, very, very basic. So I just go the panel like that. And then I'm going to go add. And then I just have to put all these buttons that I defined up here into my grid layout and then just change the names. And there you can see through all those different buttons inside of there. And that is all I need to do. If I execute this, you can see there is a very, very basic calculator. So basic that it doesn't actually add anything together, but there is a layout. And as you can see, I defined that I wanted three columns and I said, figure out how many rows we need based off the components that I add. And it automatically figured all that out. Now you normally would never do this. You would have a panel and then you'd have a whole bunch of different panels inside of the main panel. But I'm just trying to show you exactly how all these different tools specifically specifically work and that's the reason why I'm not going into utmost detail in regards to those couple things. So now let's go in here and create a grid bag layout which is going to be a little bit more complicated. One thing we're going to need here is J text field which we didn't previously use and then of course this is no longer going to be a grid layout. It's going to be a grid bag layout and in this situation we're not going to pass anything along however we do need to come in here and create what is called the grid bag constraints so to do that you just go grid bag constraints and here you're going to define some rules for all of your different components I'm going to give it a name grid constraints is equal to new and then call the constructor for this file now i'm going to walk you through all the different ways you can constrain or define the way your components are going to work and again remember this is just me experimenting and for you to really get this stuff you're going to need to do a lot of experimenting on your own in regards to how to use this but also once again you're going to be using panels inside of panels which is something that i haven't really been doing that much of but i will get into in later tutorials one thing you can define is the X position by default for every single component. Remember, these are defaults, that's what they are. And you're gonna override them as you are adding to additional components. You can also come in here and define the Y position for the components. Grid width is going to define by default how many columns a component is gonna take up. Grid height is going to define by default how many rows a component's gonna take up. And then you come to kind of a weird one. This is weight X and wait why. What these guys do is they give the layout manager a hint on how to adjust component width so that everything sort of fits into place. And if you give it a default value of zero, that means that it's going to be fixed. This is definitely some, going to be something that you're going to want to play around with. And remember, all the vid code is underneath the video, so you can download it. So I'm just going to throw 50 inside of here. And then for my Y, I'm going to throw in 100. Again, something to play with. Then I need to come in here. Remember, we have insets. 
set above and what this is going to do is handle padding around my components and I just call insets and I'm going to say that I want five pixels of padding around all of the additional components that I throw on the screen by default. Then you need to define where to place components if they do not completely fill a space and how you do that is by calling anchor and there's a whole bunch of different values you can give for this. I'm going to say grid bag constraints and then I'm going to say center everything. And instead of center, you could also put north, south, east, west, or northeast, northwest, da 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 All those different things are all possibility for you there. Then you have to define how a component can be stretched to fill in additional spaces. And for this guy, you're going to call fill. And in this situation, I'm going to say grid, bag, constraints, and I'm going to say both. And other values that you could use inside of this guy would be none, horizontal, or vertical, or of course both. And if you put none in there, obviously nothing is going to be stretched. And then I almost forgot, I need to go text result is equal to new j text field, and I'm gonna give it a default value of zero, and I'm gonna give it a default size of 20. Another thing that I haven't shown you before is if you wanna change the font for your text field, that's pretty easy to do. You just go font and equals to new, and then you say font, and I'm gonna say Helvetica, and then after that, I'm gonna say font plain, means that it's not gonna be bold, and of course, bold would be another option you could have here. I'm gonna get more into fonts in a later tutorial and a default size of 18, and then you just need to come in here and go text result, which is the name of your text field, and go set font to the font that you just defined inside of there. So that's a way that you can play around with those different guys, and it looks like I forgot to import the font library. And since I have a clips here, I can just click on import font, and it's automatically gonna pull that library in for me. If you wanna see, there it is right here. There it is. Okay, now let's scroll back down inside of here. And to use the grid bag, you're going to pretty much use the same thing, same sort of buttons inside of here. However, I'm also going to come in here and go clear all and define a new J button that I want to use inside of here. And I'm going to give it a value of C. And then I can start adding all of my buttons and text panels and everything else. So basically what we're going to use is we're going to use these constraints that we defined way up here for everything by default. And whenever we decide we need to change one of these components, we just change it down here and then continue adding components. And you normally would have this all done in an outside method. But again, since this is a tutorial, I'm just trying to keep everything all in one area. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring in my clear all button. And actually to save myself time, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, copy and then right here I'm going to type in clear all and then what do I need to do well I need to get grid constraints I have to tell it how I want to use this so I go grid constraints right here copy that scroll back down and paste that inside of there well then what I want to do is change my grid width because the next thing I'm going to do is throw in a text field so in this situation what I need to do if I want to change one of my constraints is I just go grid constraints and then I just go grid width like this and I'm going to change it to 20 and this is something that you really need to play around with whenever you're getting involved with this grid bag layout tool. And then I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to define that I want my grid X position to change. And I'm just going to throw five inside of there. And that just means that I want everything to be moved to the right. Obviously, I want my clear all button in the upper left hand corner. And then I want a little bit of space. So I need to move my text field over some. And that's exactly what that provides me with. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to go copy paste that inside of there, and then I need to throw my text field inside of here. And that's just text result. And grid constraints, of course, is going to stay there just like it has been. And I'm going to copy grid constraints again, and I'm going to set my grid width back to one like that. And then I'm also going to change my grid X position back to one, and I'm going to change my grid Y position equal to two because I want everything to go downwards. And then it's just a matter of coming in here and adding just a couple little things. So let's just copy this. So I have all my other different buttons here. I'm gonna paste that inside of there. Then all I need to do is come in here and make changes to the grid constraints so that everything lines up properly. Basically, I'm just going to be changing the X position pretty much every single time to throw everything inside of here. And I'm just going to set this to 5. Again, this is just something I was experimenting with. So then I'm going to throw 9 inside of there. And then after every three components, since we're laying this out like a calculator, I'm also going to have to change the value of Y. And X is going to go back to 1. And then the value of Y, I'm just going to throw in 3 inside of here. And then we're basically going to do the same thing again. This is going to be 5. It's just an X, Y coordinate. It's nothing all that fancy. 
I'm gonna change that to nine. As you can see, I'm doing the same thing. See, one, two, and I'm just moving everything down one here. And then I'm changing the X position as we go along. So in this situation, I'm gonna come in here and copy this. Go right after six, paste that inside of there. And then in this situation, I'm gonna change this to four. And then I'm guessing, you can probably guess, so I'm just gonna come in here again and throw in five. And then down here, I'm gonna throw in nine. So I have to change this to nine. And then we're just gonna copy this again. And after this guy, paste that inside of there and change this to five. And then we're gonna copy this again, paste a five inside of there, and here paste a nine. And because this is the end of all the components that I wanna be able to add, I don't need to do anything else. And based off of those changes, you can execute it, and you can see exactly how the calculator is working. And there it is. You can see there is the clear button one, two, three, four. These are all the different little components. There's my text field laid out right there. And that is an example of what you can do with grids and grid bag layouts. And you guys are always asking me for homework, so I know you have the knowledge to do this. Turn this into a working calculator. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.